let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. And one more time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I have to do this because the Word of God says, give honor to those who honor us do. As I've often told y'all when I come to these occasions, that this occasion is not for them. And so I like to give honor to honors to <laughs> I'd like you all to stand. Sir, give her a round of applause and for her husband. <laughs> Let so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And I want to use as a subject, she's got a new home. She's got a new home. That subject came to me when I was reminiscing about all the times that her and I spent when we were little, together. We, we, we were kind of like partners in crime. Because she got away with stuff that I never would have got away with. <laughs> and I recall when I was about four, uh, three or four, I asked Mama, I said, Mama, where's Prita? See, I didn't know nothing about that you. I just called her Prita. I didn't know about Prita. I called her Prita. I said, Mama, where's Prita? And she said, Junior, Prita's got a new home. I say, well, hey, is she coming back? No, she, she's at a new home. And that's where I got that inspiration from, from that thought of what my mother told me about her having a new home. Because at the time, she was at the Plymouth State Training Home. And that was her new home, according to what my mother had told me. And then she moved from there, she moved to the Pennsylvania house, and then from there she moved to the Rico. Each time she moved, she moved to a new home. And now she's in the final residence. Yes, yes, yes. She's got a new home. Yeah. Amen. 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 <clears throat> My niece said that Perita liked to bread. See, I'm going to talk about her for a little, a little bit. But I'm going to tell you, she loved something more than bread. Didn't she have me? She loved mama's sweet potato pies. Oh, she loved those sweet potato pies. And I'm going to tell you something else. She wasn't no saint. 
Oh, buddy. Pretty dear, huh, dirt? I recall I was uh, thinking about that time that, that we went out to get her. We used to love going out there to get her, not so much as taking her back, but love going out there to get her because we got in the car and then we drove down six miles. There wasn't no freeways back then. We had to drive down six miles all the way to Sherwood because that's where it was. And all along the way, we'd be looking, we'd be seeing cows and horses and, and sheep and goats because there was nothing but farmland back then. Yeah. Some of you in here don't even know what a, uh, you, 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 you didn't know. There was no freeways when we was kids. Y'all get on them now like it ain't nothing. We had to take six miles. And, and let, me, let me tell you something. Out of all the years that my daddy drove out there, he didn't get stopped one time by the police. Yeah, he probably wouldn't make it now, but still. <laughs> and Daddy brought her home. Well, you know, we brought her home, and, and Mama was just finishing up them sweet potato pies. There was six of them on the table. And Perita came in, jumped up on Mama, hugged Mama, hugged, yeah, 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 hugged And then she stood, she turned around and looked at the table, and Mama knew what was about to happen. So Mama told her, to sit down. And then Mama put the turkey in the oven. And then, I didn't hear her say it, but she must have said it because she told me later. She said it, but Mama went in there and sat down. And Farida's sitting there on that sofa. Y'all know she flopped that leg. <laughs> and then Junior, my mom said, Junior, Junior, put them pies on top of that cabinet. We had this white cabinet in the kitchen. So I climbed up there, put them. I said, Mama, can I get some? She said, well, no. And so I put them up there. And Farida's sitting there. He had a lot of patience. <laughs> she said sitting there. And then the next thing I know, she jumps up off the sofa, she runs into the kitchen, she one, two, up there, got a pack, came down, ran into the room, popped down on the sofa, and started eating. And I'm standing over there watching. So I go in and get me some of the pie too. <laughs> and and uh, my mama didn't raise no sense. Because as soon as I got my fill, I said, girl, what you doing? Mama, she got to stick that pie. <laughs> you see, I knew my mama wasn't gonna do nothing but go in there and take the pie. <laughs> And then my little pile of potatoes half on three of them. And then she turned around and she said, I thought I told you to watch her. Pay, pay, pay. I got a whooping. Because somewhere between the time of Korea sitting on that couch to mom put in that beer, mom said, Junior, you watch her. Don't let her get them pies. And I was thinking about getting in the pies myself, so I wasn't listening to what mom was saying. That's why my mom turned around and said, I thought I told you about pie pie. <laughs> and Bree was sitting there. <laughs> 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 That's what you get for trying to set me up. <laughs> I love my sister. She's the only woman I ever knew that listened to everything I had to say. <laughs> she listened to everything I had to say, didn't talk back to me, didn't complain about what I'm saying. I never want to sort of say, Junior, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you something. I knew when she was tired of hearing what I had to say. And y'all probably know this too because then she was sleeping on and she was sleeping on. Be just like that. And then you shut up. And then you start talking again. She... You think somebody would grow out of that? Back in January, I came over to visit on February. What happened? January, February, before this COVID thing started, I came to visit, and I was sitting there, and then, then I pulled out one of my sermons on YouTube, and I was showing her one of my old sermons I had preached last year on YouTube, and, and she was sitting there, and then as soon as she heard that music, she bounced up like this, and then I said, you like that? Then I started talking to her about the sermon, and then next thing I know she <laughs> She was a child of God. She was an anointed one. And you know how you can tell when somebody's got the anointing? No matter what opposition comes up, 
they are victorious. Yes. Mm. Oh, Satan thought he had her when she was a year old. But she was victorious. Yes. He thought he had her when she was six years old. And she had to go to that awful place. But she survived it because she had the anointing. Amen. She survived COVID-19. Because she had his anointing. She was a child of God. And I know that this hurts a lot of us. But think about it, and I've said this before. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Her daylight has came. We no longer have to worry about her because she's in God's hands. She's in paradise. I don't like the use of word. But see, when I think about heaven, I think about death. And when I think about death, I think about a loss. And when I think about a loss, I feel hurt. And when I feel hurt, nothing else matters to me. Oh, but I think about her being in paradise. Yeah. Oh, she's up there with my mother, my yeah. father, yeah. my sister, my brother, my niece, my nephews, and my cousins and my uncles. They're all up there in the backyard with the grill going because that's what they used to do. That's what paradise, and she's got all the sweet potato pie. She <laughs> and she's got her school. <laughs> because this is not about her. This is about how we're going to deal with this now, moving forward. Young lady from the recon, mm -hmm. she was like your child. I understand, Cheryl, she was like your fifth child. Because you had to do all the things for her that you would have to do for a child. Oh, but she's not a child anymore. Hallelujah. Right. Oh, she's up there talking up a storm. Mama tell her to pop down and girl, be quiet. She's talking up a storm. She's running around the way she used to when we were little kids, running around the house, getting in all kind of things. She doesn't have any disease. She does not have any infirmity. Because see, in her new home, and the word of God is not a lie, that this word is the truth. It says, in this place, there is no sickness. There is no death. There is no crime. It's perfection. Once again, and that's where she is. The word says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and I shall give you the desires of your heart. I was with her Friday night. I came up there. She was resting peacefully. I started talking to her, and every now and then her eyes would open, and then she'd go back. And I believed that it was in her heart to release us from the task of caring for her any longer. You see, when people leave this earth, you may not like it. You may not care for it. You may want them to hang on to them forever. I know if I could, my mom and daddy still be here. My brother, would still be here. But see, we have to let go and let God. She is in a far better place now. And I'm going to tell you why. Because she earned it. She survived challenges that most people would just crumble under. I recall one year my mother got a call saying that uh, that we had to rush her to the hospital because she swallowed some safety pins. Amen. And one of them, and one of them had opened up inside of her. And that's why they had to rush her to the hospital. 
they did x ray and found the pen was open. A safety pen. Because that's. But see, because, like I said, because of her anointing, she survived it. Came back like nothing happened. The word says, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. She had a relationship with God. I know this. Because, see, when you have a relationship with God, he will provide your needs. Uh, she never once had to worry about paying the bill. <laughs> she did not have a job, but she had transportation everywhere that she needed to be. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 <laughs> she did not have a Blue Cross card, but all of her medical bills were taken care of. She didn't have a, a Macy's charge card and run down, but every single day of her life she had clothes on her back. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I will tell you one thing though. If she had access to Uber, she would have called it many days when she was out there plumbing <laughs> to get her back to Detroit. <laughs> I tell you, she did not like it out there. She hated it. That was one of the hardest things I had to do, go back with my parents at night to take her back out there. She didn't have to worry about anything because God provided everything that she needed. Can we all say that? Amen. Can we all say God provided everything that we ever needed? I don't have any bills. Oh, gotcha. See, God took care of all her bills. In fact, she didn't have no bills. And that's what it means when you have a relationship with God. Even now, God is supplying all of your needs. Not your, I talked about this yesterday. Didn't you? Yeah, he will provide all your needs, not your wants. Not your wants. Not your wants, but all your needs. But all your needs. We get that confused. We think God's supposed to provide all our wants. Right. No, his word said need. So, as I take my seat, I want to remind you once again, as I've reminded folks since my daddy died, number one, death is good. It's the great equalizer. It settles all accounts. She don't know, and she's not old. She is no longer in pain. She's a perfect being now. Number two, put her gains ahead of your loss. All you've lost is a person, but if you loved her the way you say you love her, she will live on inside of you. She is no longer on medication. No need for her. She ain't sick anymore. We just have to put our loss behind her game. She with my mom and daddy. Somebody she ain't seen in over 30 years. That's a game for her. The face will eventually fade. All right now, all you see is Paris face. You can't get around it. You can't get under it. You just see her there in living color. But eventually, her face will fade. And the day will come when you will wake up and not get one conscious thought about her. And then you will be at peace. I know this to be true. And you do too. Some of you were probably <coughs> at peace a long time ago. God help me. Amen. Oh, no, Reverend. No, no, no. I can never forget my day. But did you call her every birthday? Did you drop by to see her? Just on the whim? That's when you'll be at peace. And do not think about her being in heaven. Think about her being in paradise. 
Because like I said before, when you, when they, you know where she is, but it's what you're thinking that makes you feel the way you feel. So I don't think about her being in heaven. I think about her being in paradise. Because like I told you earlier, when I think about heaven, I think about death. And when I think about death, I think about a loss. And when I think about a loss, I feel hurt. And when I feel hurt, I'm in pain. And when I'm in pain, don't nothing else matter to me. So I have learned not to think that way anymore. And from moving this day forward, whatever comes up, whatever you come up with. Last thing I want to know, Perita, a lot of y'all probably don't even know this, but Perita has a member of family named after her. Did y'all know that? She's not the only Perita Crawford. My youngest daughter, Sierra, her middle name is Perita. I got the you right thing. Amen. <laughs> I got it right. When I named her Perita. Her name is Sierra Perita. Well, it's English, not, but it was. So she lives on in our memories. And she will live on in your memories. Amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. She's in a new home.